Okay, this is a video showing the demonstration of your surge protection uh, tester, and I'll show you how to work it. Uh, basically, to do a test, uh, you plug it in, see that it comes on, uh, turn on power, there we go, and it comes on. Uh, this we don't need for now, I'll show you that later, turn it off. Okay, put in your tester or your board, board under test. Now the test is armed as the lid is open. Close it and it'll start testing automatically. Uh, first it does a general continuity test which determines the board type, uh, then it does a short test, then it continues on with a more advanced continuity test, and right now it's cycling through the phases. It does all these continuity tests before it turns on power. Okay, it's done. It passed. It means it passed all the continuity tests. As for the phases, you have to watch the LEDs on top to determine that. But that's basically how you test all your boards. It automatically identifies each board, and you just test it that way. It's that simple. Uh, now, for all these buttons on here, there are the more advanced features for troubleshooting, and I'll go through that next. So we'll take your board out. Turn it on. Press this little button on the top. Comes on. Now you have to connect to Bluetooth, so press the connect. And I pressed it too fast. Let me press it again. There we go. All connected. The green CPU light is on. Uh, you got to watch these Android systems. Touching it doesn't do nothing, anything because it wants to scroll. Uh, touch and release. When you release is when it actuates. Okay. Now this allows us to do a few other things, like control the phases separately, and it also duplicates all the buttons on the front panel here. And, and so does this remote control, and I'll go over that all shortly here. So we'll do a test again. Put your board back in there. We'll close the lid, and I'll start the test automatically. And now this time you'll see the phases uh, flash through here. Uh, it's doing the continuity test. Now it turned on high voltage. Uh, it's cycling through the phases where you'd be watching the LEDs. Now it's finished. Now this is a tablet PC so you can record all your tests and you can also upload it up to your network or whatever else you can do with a tablet PC. Uh, you can scan barcode. I've included uh, the Google applications uh, store in here. Uh, you have to install it yourself because you have to have your own password, but you can download all the applications like bar scan, code scanner, and all, all the little things you might want to add to this tester uh, and do that very easily without getting into the programming. Uh, if you want to delve into the programming, all the source code is available and uh, you'll have it all and you can do that. Uh, now these buttons here, most of them are for troubleshooting and for setup. So, I'm going to go through the basic ones first. Uh, this is power on, and it's also, a last, it's also a smart test, which tests the last test that failed, if a test does fail. So it's good for troubleshooting, and just if no test failed, it's just a power on switch. So that just turns power on. And it's not real high voltage power, it's the continuity measuring power. It's, it's 5 volts DC, so it's nothing scary. Uh, this turns power off. Okay. So this power on, power off, this is a hardwired reset. It's the only button that can reset. It's a good safety feature. If you have any problems, just hit this reset. It turns power off and sets everything back to reset mode. Uh, okay, now let's go through the, the uh, setup. We can set things up by going to negative tests. Scroll down. Uh, you can have your test delay. Uh, let's. You can have your LED intensity, which adjust that. Get back to 50. Uh, test tones you can turn on if you don't like that beeping, or turn them off if you don't like the beeping all the time. I'll turn it back on. You can turn your pass tones on and off, fail tones on and off. Uh, remote control, which is this, you can turn on and off. Uh, that's good if you have bright lights flashing a lot, which will trigger this remote control. And what that'll do is it'll cause the keyboard to lock up. Because there's no way it's going to give the exact digital data for the remote control that actually do anything, but it will lock up the keyboard if 
you have a problem with remote control interference, you'll have to sh shut this off. Uh, I haven't experienced anything. We've got really good filtering. It shouldn't happen. Uh, audio control off. There's a feature for a voice control in this. Uh, that's unsafe for this, so I didn't implement it. Basically, if there's a lot of noise in the background, it could start a test. And with high voltage, we don't want anything like that. Plus, you have this device here, uh, which can have voice control if you want it, but I still advise against it. Uh, Google has a much better voice control uh, command control than we do. Uh, it's less likely to be set off by background noise, but it still will. So I don't advise voice control on this. Uh, Bluetooth on and off. It's on now, so that can run. Uh, press any key. This, this way, instead of a timeout between the phase shifts, you can press any key to continue. It'll pause and give the operator time to look at the LEDs and make sure everything's right, press any key, and it'll continue. And that means every key, except for this reset button and the power switch. Uh, that's hardwired and that isn't. But these keys here, the remote control keys, or any keys on here, will all work to press any key. Okay, next one. Uh, auto test on. Uh, that's the lid cover. If you don't like that it arms and tests with the lid, you can turn that off and then it won't work. I'll turn it off just to show you that. Uh, this is save preferences. Uh, don't save preferences until you're done setting everything up. Uh, do it after maybe about an hour of using it. Um, it's all automatically saved in EEPROM here. Uh, so you can use it just as it is. Once you save preferences, you save it in EEPROM, uh, which means when you power it off and power it back up, they'll still remain there. Uh, then the next one is restore factory defaults. Uh, if you get really screwed up in all these settings, just restore factory defaults. Press that to restore it. Uh, okay, so now I turned the lid switch off. It should test. It doesn't. Uh, so what you have to do now is press, press the test button, which is here. Now, this, this test button can be run with this test, uh, and also test up here duplicates that. All these keys are duplicated here. This, this is the power on key. Uh, this will turn power off. Just do it. Power on, power off. They can't be the same key because sometimes people don't, you got to aim this right. And if you aim it a little bit off, they might press power off a whole bunch of times trying to shut it off and end up turning it off then back on again. So we've got to have separate keys for that. Uh, this turns the pass tones on and off, this volume plus volume minus. Uh, this is last, last test retest. This is uh, the test button right here in the middle. And then this is the select when you select functions. Uh, they're the same as these keys. So if you go up, oh, aim it at it. I'll turn the test tones on. We can go, we can scroll up through our, all our preferences. And these are all the tests that we're scrolling up through now. Uh, test one, short testing. Test two, de determines the circuit type. Test three, continuity. Four, starts cycling through the power all the way to nine where it turns uh, it all off and, and cycles back to one. Uh, you can test that. If you have a lot of tests, this is handy. Uh, just press it automatically, or you can go to them real quick. Just press like 0, 7, and it'll go to test 7. Or you can change the to negative with this and go to 0, 4 to, to go to your setups. Uh, but mostly for this one, since there's not that many tests, you probably just use the scroll up and down keys. Okay, so that goes through this remote control. Now, this... Checking phase A, you would just press this, and it doesn't turn on right away because it's going to check the continuity first to make sure there's no shorts. Okay, now phase A is on. You can turn on phase D, 
when it comes on right away. Phase C, uh, and turn them off. And you say you wanted to turn phase these two on, turn phase A off. Now if you turn them all off, it has to assume that you took the unit out, so it'll go through the continuity test again. But as long as you keep one phase on, any phase, it'll, it'll go through everything really quick. Okay, now let's turn them all off and, and demonstrate how it, it goes through the continuity test. There, now we'll turn uh, C on. Okay, so it'll take a while now for C to come on. So that's how you control the phases individually. Okay, I'll turn it back off. Now let's just go through some testing, some general testing. Uh, we'll test another board type. This is the phase to phase, the board with phase to phase protection. Now there's no modules on here, so I need to give it some weight. So I'm going to turn this upside down and put it on here. And it just barely clears the cover. Auto test doesn't start because I have that off. I'll turn that back on. I kind of like auto test, it makes it easier. Auto test on. There we go. Now. So that goes through and does the general type, short testing. And now it's doing continuity testing. It determined the board type, uh, powering up and cycling through the phases. I'll do a demonstration of what happens when the phases are short. So, let's just short. Since this is the phase-to-phase uh, -phase one, I can get the phases right here. Now, this should come up with an error, shorted phase-to-phase. Yep, there it caught the short, now it continues with the continuity testing to see if it finds anything else, and it says shorted phase C. Alright, now this would be a neutral on the other type of the board, so it wouldn't register, but on this type it does. Uh, it also will check neutral to phase and ground to phase and ground to ground, or ground to neutral, I mean. I'll try a neutral to phase, I'll show you that. Okay, shorted neutral to phase. Now you may have noticed that this is a little bit slower than this. Uh, this is the primary one to watch. This is on a radio, Bluetooth, so it has some delays. If you really want to watch exactly what's happening, watch the regular LCD display that's hardwired into this. Okay, uh, ground to neutral. So it'll go through and do all these tests before it applies power. Uh, that way you don't have to worry about anything smoking on you. Alright, so that's that one. And if you can do this one.